Hey, welcome to Psychologies. I'm Simon Haig, an accredited and barefoot trained coach. I am the creator. Have you got a sleep problem? What can you do about it? Coaching program. In this short coaching video, you'll learn a bit more about your sleep. This is the third video in a series of four that will help you look at your own sleep pattern and take the first baby steps to get a better night's sleep. You can subscribe to Psychologies Magazine to access the entire course, including weekly journal workbooks for in-depth coaching. Subscribe via the link in this week's video caption. If you're already a subscriber, head to the Life Leap Club page on the Psychologies website and sign in. OK, so thank you for all your work so far, and I hope that you've found the content useful. Last week, I suggested adjusting something to help you improve your sleep hygiene. This week, we're going to dip a bit more into our lives. Let's face it, stuff happens and we have to deal with this and get on with it. Unfortunately, some stuff does affect how we sleep. We're focusing this week on understanding some of these external factors and how potentially we can deal with these. There is a model that we can consider that is used in cognitive behaviour therapy or CBT, as some of you may have heard. This can help us consider something slightly differently. We understand that stress is generally caused by an activating event or a situation. This trigger then invites us to react. The reaction is usually built on a complex blend of past experience and self-talk and leads us to a belief about how this is going to play out. Our response or consequence is then what other people see and how our stress plays out. As an example, a few years ago, I sang regularly in a local amateur dramatics group. I was nervous before going onto stage and was petrified about forgetting my lines. Something which we celebrated actually quite regularly as we competed for the most off the wall um, lines. The activating event. As an example, a few years ago, I sang regularly in a local amateur dramatics group. I was nervous before going onto stage and was petrified about forgetting my lines. The activating event was that I was going onto stage to deliver some prose or song, and my belief was that I was going to cock it up, cock it up monumentally. I'd sleepless nights about this, and the consequence was that I was more tired and oft gave the musical director a good workout trying to understand where I was going with a song. I also took my script to the side of stage each time I went on, as my confidence to deliver my lines was being affected. The reality of the, of, of the consequence is like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It then plays out. The clever bit of this model is that we can introduce a level of dispute. If we think back to my example, if I took a different approach and understood that I, it was only occasionally I got confused and delivered a line in, incorrectly or sung a wrong note, then everything would be fine, wouldn't it? There are several programs about outtakes where professionals get it wrong. And I'm not that bad. I do get applause and I do get invited back to play parts in the future. So it can't be that bad. The rational truth in this example is that I can deliver a line when I need to. And I can sing a song at the correct pitch and correct tempo. I have rewritten an effective new approach. That is the E. Now that you understand the A, B, C, D, E model, you can work through an example that perhaps is inviting you to react in a certain way. A activating event, B, belief, C, consequence, D, disputation of belief, E, effective new approach. Being tough with D is really important. This is a critical phase and you may find it useful to work with a friend or colleague or even a coach on this particular area. Perhaps you may also want to revisit your sleep journal and see what effect your changes are actually having. Thank you for coming in this week. Um, it's been a great week. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care.